Yep, the tire fits and it's awesome. Boom, video done. Okay, just kidding. Stick around for the full overview. As with anything, there are pros and cons. The audio broke here, but in my sweet introduction, I'm just saying, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the Michelin Pilot Street 2 tire, my reasons for picking it, uh, some commentary on changing the tire, and how well it fits my InMotion V11. Finally, the ride feel and review. I've put a total of 3,300 kilometers on this V11. 1,300 of those are on the new Michelin tire. So I'd like to talk a minute about the original stock tire, the CST 1488. As you can see, there's a fair bit of tread left on that one. So why waste the tire by changing it ahead of schedule? Well, not to point out the obvious, but because it's a single wheel, it's one of the biggest changes to the riding feel that can be made. Additionally, I'd like to ride day, night, rain, hail or shine. So I need to have confidence in the rubber I'm riding on. Therefore, investing in a high quality tire with sticky rubber and that can handle wet weather conditions, which increases safety, is a big deal for me. There are some problems with it, and I'd say that the distinct V profile with the gap left by the tread pattern on the sides, the tire either wants to stand upright or dip into a turning or carving position. It just wants to do one or the other. I particularly noticed this when riding on the grass, which has put me off grass riding so far. I have to say that it is more agile and playful, and I kind of did enjoy having to lock into a carve and then stand upright when switching to the other side. For stability in straight lines, I really felt like I had to do a slight carve from side to side, which could be a pro or a con because it is more engaging. This tire gave me terrible train tracking and I nearly smacked a pedestrian because of it and nearly fell off the wheel another time because of it. I believe this is because of the V profile. Now I'd like to cover the reasons why I picked the Michelin Pilot Street 2 tire and the 80, 90, 14 size. I've already been pushing my V11 to the speed limit and I didn't want to decrease the top speed. That's why I picked the 90 aspect ratio. I just wanted a little bit larger diameter to maintain a high top end speed. Another common choice is the Pirelli Angel 8014. As I said, this one has the 80 aspect ratio, which is only eight millimeters smaller diameter than the Michelin, but that was a factor for me. The big thing that put me off the Pirelli was this comment on their website that it uses a multi-contour radius. My thought is that a multi-contour radius will give a non-linear and less predictable lean into turns and cornering feel. I was chasing a predictable carving tire and this feature of the Pirelli excluded it. Pirelli also failed my criteria of having a solid central strip of rubber, whereas the Michelin does. The next section of video is some commentary on the wheel's condition as I strip it down and some tips for changing the tire. Rightio, so I'm in my garage and I've cleaned up the space to begin work. Uh, loaded up Marty's tire change video, that's what I'll be following. And I'm going to be laying out the left hand parts here and the right side parts over there to help keep things organized. I've just come up to the uh, suspension side of parts and yeah, I'm just loving this impact driver because it just really smashes out those bolts, uh, breaks the lock tight. And... Main board's pretty dust free and I'm about to pull off the battery cover. So let's have a look how it's fared. Looks like a bit of dust has gotten in there, but I don't see any signs of water. So I just got to the motor bolts here and a pretty tanky uh, five mil Allen bolt. And they're really stuck in there. I couldn't really get it with a hand tool. So once again, the, the impact driver to the rescue to break that. Just pull the motor out and see how dirty it is. 
So remember this is after 2,000 kilometers, only a little bit riding on wet roads. I live on the coast, so I'd be expecting sand. There we go, and that's in the shell. I was having a bit of trouble getting it up over the bead, so I took out the valve stem and got all that air out of the tube, and that's really helped. Of course, a bit of uh, dish soap to lubricate the bead there. Just got a spray bottle, but whatever. Got a big ass tie lever here for my e-scooter and a little bit of plastic to protect the rim and probably don't need something that big but I've got it over so I think I'll just be able to peel it off from this point. Yeah so that bead came right off and someone on the group was asking about the tube sides so there it is for you, 18 by 3. Alrighty so I got the tyres off and so you can see direct comparison without any load on it. Really good close fit and size uh, overall diameter. Looks a smidge taller to me, but that might just be because uh, the stock CST is so soft it's collapsing down a bit. But we'll see how it fits once we get it on there. That could be because it's a 90 in the 80-90 the size. That will should be able to fit it in there. Alrighty, so I've got the one bead on the rim. I just used my hands and knees uh, with a bit of the dish soap around the bead to lubricate it and at this point you know make certain you've got it uh, the directionality that you want so I'm going for front tire orientation. So I've just pumped up the tube a bit to help it get settled in that space um, helps you avoid pinch punctures when we're resetting the tire and when we go to uh, set this bead into the rim, we'll have to let it down flat again, of course. Oh, it's, it's real tight. I have to take the valve core out again, but just by hand and my knees worked it around to that far, and now I'm just gonna take little nibbles at it with the uh, the tools there, the tire levers. Right here, got it on all right there. Just wiped off the excess um, dish soap. And now putting some air in before I mount it back into the wheel to make sure that it's holding air, not got any pinch fights. And... While I had the wheel out, I pulled off the uh, bearing covers that were introduced after batch one to stop uh, water getting in and wrecking the bearings. So I cleaned it all up and then reapplied a fresh a nice thick coat of uh, marine grease. Once I'd pulled the cover off and see that it was in good condition, I didn't bother stripping and cleaning the other side. There's some sealant around the motor cable, but it's degrading a bit, so I've just started to pick it away uh, with a screwdriver, and I'm gonna put a new bead of silicone around that one. Since I had the wheel pulled apart, I took this opportunity to silicone around the casing and the motherboard housing as well. I really like that peace of mind since I like to ride in the rain at all weather conditions. Right here, I've come back after an hour or two after lunch and I flick the valve there. We can see that it's pretty much holding pressure, so let's get this deflated and mount it back into the wheel. I remember to put thread locker on the important bolt, like the, the modem bolt here. Phew, there we go guys, I've just finished fitting the Michelin Pilot Street 2 and that's your clearance there. It seems to spin really well. I haven't even ridden on it yet, so I'm about to do that. And uh, here's the original here. And remember I've got it in the front wheel orientation, you can have it in the rear, but uh, from what I read, you want it on the front orientation because for motorcycles, the front is the one that parts the water and does better under braking. And uh, for well, EUCs, braking is going to be the greater force. So there you go. So I've just finished a 42 kilometer maiden voyage on the tyre and yeah, gee, 
all I can say is it just inspires confidence and feels quite a bit different to their stock. I'd say it just sort of rolls and it turns a whole lot smoother than the original. It's kind of like effortless and I'm running at 26 psi. It's a lot stiffer than the original so um, you can get away with it and I was on 31 psi with the, the CST stock so that also helps just really mellow out the ride. I was just feeling it and it's a bit warm so it's gotten a bit of heat into it. Oh, kickstand. It just takes up bumps and uh, the train tracking is so much better you wouldn't believe. And I just zipped across some hard packed sand and dirt and it was really good. It is a heavier tyre so it does take a bit more effort to do hard braking I noticed. Um, and also gonna do some battery comparisons I'll throw them up and my initial thought is it's gonna take a bit out of the, the range so I'm already pushing the range on this thing which having a bit less is gonna be a bit of a challenge. So I'm making this video a couple of months later and after 1,300 kilometers ridden on the Michelin. My original comments are pretty true. However, the big changes is that I quickly went to 30 PSI over the 26. I've experimented up to 34 and anywhere in that range I find fine for me. But for me, I've settled on 33 PSI for my riding weight of 75 kilograms. Now the big differences between the original and the Michelin is that it's a round profile. This makes turning effortless. An effect I wasn't expecting was that train tracking is pretty much eliminated. See these strips on the footpath? This originally caused horrendous train tracking on the stock tire. Now it's a thing of the past. This is a bigger deal than I thought because before the tire would grab into grooves in the concrete and start going a different direction, which uh, yeah, nearly threw me off two times. The other big change is the extra mass of the tire. Now I've measured the stock. I did forget to measure the Michelin. However, from this Facebook post, it looks to be about two kilograms in mass, which has a dramatic nonlinear impact to the gyroscopic effect. This is however beneficial when cruising because the wheel feels extremely steady. The tire just wants to stand upright and I no longer need to do the slight carving in a straight line to stay stable. I particularly notice extra mass when braking. I need to put more effort in to get the same result. When it comes to carving, it's quite a different feeling. It just effortlessly rolls into the turn. It also has a dramatic impact at low speed turns. The stock, I felt really needed to bend and knee in the outside leg to push the wheel over to get it to turn. The Michelin simply rolls in a very predictable way. And really at all speeds, it just turns predictably. I had it in my mind that this tread pattern would give less grip off-road than the stock tyre. I'm very pleased, however, with the off-road capability of this tyre. Surprisingly, I feel that it outperforms the original. Before, I wasn't confident going onto grass because of the V-profile of the original tipping the wheel over and train tracking away in ruts. Now, I enjoy it much more and have the confidence to push into different trails that I've never been to before. I've now done many kilometers on gravel roads and single track, even slightly muddy conditions. And this has really just highlighted how tough Michelin tire is. The abuse of the Michelin tire is taken on gravel roads and I even picked up this piece of glass, which I pulled out and the tire was fine and didn't get a puncture. When contrasting with the original, I don't think the original would have survived. As you can hear from all of these clips, the tyre is extremely silent running. 
You can only hear it because I'm holding the microphone close to the wheel in many of these shots. That's either a pro or a con depending on your preferences. I personally quite like it. I've had a fair share of wet road riding. Of course I take it a bit easier on turns and watch out for wet debris, but I've never once slipped, except for doing a U-turn on a muddy single track. There's the beauty of riding in Australia. Check out this snake just found. Now when it comes to the downsides, I found that it can use around 15% more battery. Surprisingly, it seems that I'm riding even faster and harder on this tire, just from the sheer confidence that it gives me. Of course, this decreases the range even further. So the most I pushed it was 72 kilometers in one ride and I finished with 8% battery. During this ride, I took measures to eke out as much range as possible. However, several kilometers were off-road on this route and sandy tracks, which will drain the battery even faster. The tire is a tight fit within the wheelhouse and part of the rotation was slightly rubbing the casing. What I found was the kickstand had so much tension in it, it was pulling the housing into the wheel. I was able to eliminate the rubbing by slightly stretching the kickstand to fix this. I was then getting a ticking sound from the tire and I found it's the little hairs hitting the housing. Once these were trimmed, the sound stopped. A nice feature is that the tire has included wear bands which show when it needs to be replaced. There's a good chunk of rubber that needs to wear down before this happens. As you can see after 1300 kilometers, there's still a ton of rubber remaining on this and overall the wear and tear is extremely minimal and I expect many more thousands of kilometers on this tire. Thanks guys, safe riding and I'll catch you next time.